painting to working on engines, I've been working on boats since I was just a kid. Lately, I've been doing a lot of woodworking and it's turned into something that I've really enjoyed. Back in May of 2021, Baron and Heather, the new owners of this beautiful Hans Christian 43 behind me, asked me to make them a new bowsprit. We are gonna build, by we, I mean mostly you. Chris is gonna build us. A new bowsprit because our bowsprit has enough issues that it's time to be, it just needs to be replaced. Well, she's 40 years old, a little bit of rot, maybe some bugs, maybe a genie inside, I'm not sure. We're gonna find out though. So we're gonna build a new one yeah. to make the boat offshore ready. Having never built anything this large or crucial before, I definitely had my work cut out for me. So let's start with what even is a bowsprit. A bowsprit is a spar coming out of the forepeak of a boat. And the reason that they did this back in the day and still to this day is to give more sail area out of a smaller boat. So even though this is only a 43 foot boat on the water, it's 50 something overall. And therefore you're getting a lot more sail area out of a smaller boat. So with that being said, there's a lot of forces going into this bowsprit and all the way around it. You can even kind of think of it as a compression post sideways and in front of the boat. So it's crucial that the structural integrity is sound to prevent things like a catastrophic rig failure. As legendary riggers from around the world will tell you, your rig is only as strong as your weakest link. And in this boat's case, it was the bowsprit. Repairing the old bowsprit was just out of the equation and Baron and Heather knew that the right call was going to be to build a new one. Since they were starting from scratch, there was a lot of different options in the material that they could have used to build the new bowsprit. You could do it out of carbon fiber, fiberglass, aluminum, stainless. Really, there's many options, but Baron and Heather decided to go with the traditional route and build it out of wood, which I could appreciate. Back in the 70s and 80s when they were building these boats, old growth timber was readily available. So you could just go out, find a piece of timber that worked for your bowsprit, shape it to size and put it in place. And you didn't have to think about laminating pieces together to get an overall size that you needed. But times have changed and now laminating is really the only way you can go when you need a big piece of wood like this eight by eight inch, 12 foot long bowsprit. Even though laminating is not the traditional way that these bowsprits are made, it's not to say that it's a bad way. And actually it's a lot stronger in a lot of ways than using a one piece of wood solution. When you laminate boards together, it adds a lot of rigidity fore and aft that you don't have going the other way. The only problem with laminating is that you run the risk of delamination, which is obviously the worst case scenario. And there was a lot of ways that I implemented a lot of new age technology into this bowsprit to mitigate the option of delamination or rot to even happen in the first place. In order to obtain the eight by eight inch cube that we needed to build this bowsprit, we needed a lot of wood and the best material we could find was Sepele. Sepele is a excellent option for laminating and it's incredibly strong. In fact, it's a lot stronger than teak. So we ended up getting 11 boards at 5 8 inch thick. And once I had all the material in one spot, I set to work on getting the many, many measurements off of the old bowsprit and starting to put all of those into the new pieces of wood. of building this bowsprit is trying to give myself a little bit of help when this thing is an 8x8 eight eight inch cube. Cutting it to shape is not necessarily the easiest thing in the world. Um, I have to use what's called a beam saw and even that only gets the depth cut of about six and a half inches and I need to cut about eight. What I've decided to do is cut each individual piece before I actually glue it. And what I did with the bowsprit is I basically laid this on top of one of the planks and I traced it exactly. And then I added about a quarter of an inch on all corners and all directions. That means when I actually cut it out of the plank, uh, it's a little bit big. And I did that because the original bowsprit isn't square and it's also not actually the right size for the stainless fittings that we have on the boat. This is only eight inches tall, and back on the boat, the opening where it fits through the forepeak is actually eight and a quarter inches. So I'm actually gonna be making this a little bit chunkier. With wood, I can always take away material, I can't add it. So I made really sure that I have enough wood here to plane and sand and not 
encroach on our overall dimension. Uh, that's super important. Individually cutting all the planks before gluing them together made the process go a lot smoother because I was able to cheat a little bit and start the process before it was a gigantic hunk of wood. So this is some of the areas on these planks that are not so great. Right here we have a lot of splitting in the middle of what looks like a knot or something like that, but the wood's checking. So you can tell that this is an off piece. I made very sure to cut away from this. This is another board which I didn't really like the way it looked has a really giant low spot right here. There's a couple knots in this, so I made sure to basically not use this and cut away from it. Uh, and in doing that, we have just enough wood to get us through the project. Once all the pieces were cut, it was time to adhere them all together. And this was a very stressful part. Uh, we decided to use Smith's Oak and Teak glue. This was by far the best out there that I could find when it comes to laminating wood together. And needless to say, it was stressful because once things are all covered in glue, there is a clock on how long we can actually work with the stuff before it sets off and cures. What are you doing, Baron? What am I doing? Cleaning wood. We got wood that's cut. We're gonna clean it, it's been sanded, and then we're gonna glue it. Hopefully it goes well. Hopefully it goes well. It's finally time to get the glue going. We are using Smith's Teak and Oak glue. We've been told by everyone that it's the best stuff to use. Uh, so luckily it has a really generous pot life, about 60 minutes, I think is what I read, maybe 90 minutes. So we've got plenty of time to get them all laminated together. Hopefully we have enough. We have a two quart kit, which will give us half a gallon, which is good. And uh, Baron is just wiping it all down. I hear a lot of hopefully still. I'm uh, there's I a like lot to of be like, oh, it's absolutely gonna have enough, and uh, it's absolutely just gonna be perfect, right? When we run out, we go to the crazy glue. That's that's the next. Thing I brought inside. liquid nails. Great. Just like I had planned and hoped, we had just enough epoxy to glue all 11 boards together. After all the clamps were in place, we tended the sprit and put three space heaters in. This got the bath sprit to about 108 degrees Fahrenheit. Getting the temperature so high when the epoxy cures is an important step that no matter what the temperature fluctuation that this bath sprit sees, there will never be any problems with delamination. So the bath sprit's been sitting for about two days now. Uh, when we finished gluing, we put the tent above all the way down to the ground and we also put this tent over the actual bowsprit and put three space heaters below it and we got the whole bowsprit up to about 107 to 108 degrees while it cured. So we did that to try to mitigate the possibility for the epoxy to let go when Baron and Heather get down into really hot tropical weather. Uh, that's an issue with epoxy is that whatever temperature it cures at, it's actually only good to that temperature plus a certain amount of temperature varying on top of it. So say you cured your epoxy at 40 degrees or 60 degrees Fahrenheit at like 115 degrees Fahrenheit, uh, you have a chance that your epoxy will actually come apart on you and liquefy. And that's the exciting part. I get to uh, take all this stuff off, take the clamps off and make sure that everything cured properly and nothing's off. So let's cross our fingers. Not only did I use a lot of clamps to make sure that the basprit was nice and secure, but we also laid the existing basprit 
right on top to give it a little bit more weight uh, to the whole entire platform. That way, when we use the clamps, we weren't worried about actually bringing the whole bottom up and making it non-uniform. With the weight of the bass sprit, I hopefully mitigated that problem and made sure that the bottom was nice and flat. a little bit of anxiety but so far so good it looks pretty damn perfect incredibly flat that's pretty cool the next step was to grind away the majority of epoxy squeeze out and then mark up one side at a time the final shape of the bowsprit. Using a hand electric planer, I dialed in the 90 degree edges and the taper from the belly to the nose. Many hours of grinding, planing, sanding, and chiseling, the bowsprit was finally ready for its first fit. After about four test fits, the bowsprit fit like a glove. Sitting back and looking at the bowsprit makes me smile. There was so much tedious amount of measuring and shaping, and I'm really proud to see how it turned out. Shaping the nose with a Kron's iron to fit over was a good challenge. Due to the bowsprit being 12 feet long, using a lathe just wasn't a possibility. So doing it the old fashioned way by hand with a spoke shave was the only method of choice. Baron, what do you think? We're getting there. Stressing out yet? Fuck, I've been stressed for two months, man. It's all your fault. But it's good. Nah, it's uh, big steps. Beautiful. Get my fancy star on this and... Uh... Once the bowsprit's final shape was determined, it was time to do the scariest part of this entire project, was to cut 14 very big holes in what was a perfect solid piece of wood. Driving up north on the trans Canada Highway The night is sweet, a thousand stars I'm driving up north on the trans Canada Highway Drilling through eight inches of hardwood is a task in and of itself and then you add in the mix of having to align the holes of the pulpit the Kron's iron and the Samson posts perfectly, I had to think about even the thickness of the varnish that was gonna be put on the sprit. After all the stressful drilling was over, all the holes were drilled, and it was time to move on to my last step, which was installing G10 tubes into all of the holes. This was another step that I ended up doing because I wanted there to be no chance for water to get in to this bow sprit. Epoxying these tubes in allowed for a barrier to be between the bare wood and any moisture that this bowsprit would ever see. Going this route also allowed for there to be no sealant necessary for any of the bolts. So Baron can take this bowsprit in and out as many times as he could ever want to and not have to worry about putting any sealant in or out. Again, all of the holes inside of the bowsprit are completely sealed with epoxy and a one inch thick wall G10 tube. At this point, the bowsprit for me, was pretty much done, but I recommended Baron on a couple things when it came to sealing. 
First off, I told them to use Smith's Penetrating Epoxy. This is a really good option for getting epoxy really deep inside of the exterior of the wood. After that, I told them to top it off with some all wood. All wood is a fantastic option when it comes to varnish and honestly lasts the longest out of any varnish that I've ever used. And yes, I've used Epiphanes, I've used Man of War, I've used a lot of different options out there and all wood, although it's price, is definitely the best. After all the cosmetic work was finished, it was time to lift all these heavy pieces up one more time. So today is the day that we are putting the basswood in for the final time. We just marked the last hole that we needed to drill in the deck and Baron is just taping it off for some caulk to be put on and that is it. So far everything is lining up correctly and Baron did an awesome job with the varnish. It looks mighty good. He and I are both excited that we don't have to lift it any more times. So it's a win-win for us. I know, it looks amazing. We need proof that you're smiling. Well, I'm, I'm smiling. I've got a sailboat now. Check it out. Yeah. Four sails and an anchor. I could not be happier how this project ended up. The bowsprit is functional and it also looks incredibly good. And I'm excited to see all of the many, many, many miles that Heather and Baron put under this bowsprit while their cruising plans go on. So that's pretty much it for this video. It was a extremely fun project. I learned a lot and I would do it again in a heartbeat. Uh, that being said, I'm very excited to get back to work on our boat. Uh, we're in the process of doing a lot of different things, but really kind of coming to the end of these big projects and hopefully a lot more sailing in the future. And speaking of that, our next video does have a little bit of boat work in it, but actually has some sailing in it. So we're excited to show you guys that and look forward to the next episode. Uh, we get to bring out Geronimo and get some racing involved.